This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is, or once again is, the Thrustmaster TLCM pedal set. These are the first load cell pedals from Thrustmaster. They come in at $200 and they are available for pre-order now on Amazon. You'll be able to find a link in the description of the show to be able to go to them. So, for 2020, I've decided to do a few things different here at the Sim Pit. Number one, I wanted to simplify the review, which meant I wanted to pull some of the content out of the review, like unboxing, some of the installation, and some of the, the adjustability even out of the review. I cover them, or I graze over them in the review, but I wanted to take my time and do a little bit more detailed reviews, uh, or, or I should say, accompanying videos that would go along with that review with a little more detail on things like the adjustability and installation. So with this pedal set, there are some things that you can adjust and I wanna talk about not only the adjustments that can be made, but the way that I set it up and dialed it in for me because maybe that'll help you out there. Now there are a few things to take into consideration, of course, what kind of rig is it being mounted into? Uh, do you want it in an incline? Are you using a wheelbase or plugging it directly into the, the, the computer via the USB? But for the most part, once we get those parts out of the way, what you can actually do to the pedal set is going to be pretty common for everybody. So right now, let's start off with the basic adjustments that you can make. The basic being the pedal faces, and this is pretty common to a lot of pedal sets out on the market. Very common to Thrustmaster. So you can see right now I have all the pedals kind of centered on their arms. You can see there's a series of holes, and that allows you to move each of the pedals. So you can see that for the clutch example, I can move the pedal over this way a half an inch, or I can move it this way a half an inch. Same thing for the brake, same thing for the gas. So on left to right, we have about one full inch of adjustment, and in a moment I'll get to why we will want to do such a thing. In addition to that, you can see there, well, it's hard for you to see, but when we pull it apart, there are two different sets of holes, which means I can actually take this whole pedal face and move it up uh, about a half an inch, about the uh, size of one of these holes, a little less than a half an inch actually. Same thing for the clutch. With the gas pedal, same thing. I can go up to a higher hole set and, or I should say, I can actually drop the pedal face down lower to match the other ones. Now that, and so we do have some up and down adjustability as well. I'm gonna get to more of that when we get to my particular settings. You also can adjust a couple of different things. You can adjust the angle. Now these blocks are a different angle than the default stock blocks, and it's actually gonna tilt the faces more towards the driver instead of the reclined angle that they're at. Now, the other thing they do is these are also thicker, which means for some people, especially if you're a heel tower, I like having a little bit of compression. Right now, these two pedal faces are completely flush. So if I were gonna do heel towing, the moment I start to press on the brake, I'm already carrying the throttle pedal with it. If I have the brake pedal a little bit further forward, like many real cars have, you can actually press a little bit of brake before you even touch the gas, then you'd be able to do your heel tow maneuvering. So that's something else to take in consideration when just talking about the pedal faces. So right now, oh, forgive me, let me get, grab my tape measure real quick. First things first, let's talk about the default distance. So right now, there's about an inch and seven eighths distance between the gas and brake pedal. Now I am a left foot breaker. I come from karting. Uh, I love using my left foot for braking, but it also means that having as much distance between the gas and brake are very critical to me. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna push the gas pedal as far to the right as I possibly can and then I'm gonna to wanna to move the brake pedal as far to the left, creating as much of a distance. Now I know because I've already played with this, we can get up to two and seven eighths of an inch, so a full inch more separation between the two. The other change that I'm gonna to wanna to make actually is I am gonna to wanna to put the thicker block in to push that pedal face a little further away for heel toe. And then the only question mark, I'm gonna want my clutch at the same thickness or distance but I'm also may want to push it further away, depending. So let's go ahead and show off how we do this. It's really simple. Start with the gas pedal, because that's the one that we know we're going to make the least amount of change to. Now, I actually, because I have a lot of space in my rig, I don't mind my gas pedal actually sticking up a little bit. So I actually am going to put my gas pedal at the highest angle uh, position I possibly can. 
as far pushed over to the right as I can and on the short cushioning to get a little bit more distance between my gas and brake pedal. So I'm also gonna be able to show you the two different mounting holes. So we are actually in the lower set of two, which would be this bottom one and this bottom one up here. We're gonna move it up one as well. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna put this as high as I can get it, meaning push it as down low as I can get it. I'm gonna to go to the corresponding holes. We're gonna go into that upper hole there. And then the same thing on the top one. And we're gonna mount that in the higher position. And look at how much taller the gas pedal is now. And you can see it's quite a bit further, a half an inch, further away from the brake than it was before. So you can see the distance or height change that we've made. You can see the increased distance between. And if I turn them this way, you can see the difference in height now. This one being much taller than the other two pedals, looking a little more like a standard gas pedal versus the all three at the same height. Uh, now, brake pedal. We're gonna do two changes here. We wanna move it further away from the gas pedal, number one. And number two, we are going to change the thickness of that pad. Now, it will change the angle. Like I said, it's going to flatten the pedal out a little bit as well, but that's okay. Now, we have the same thing underneath. When we pull this off, we have the three holes on the front going left and right adjustment. And then we have the same four holes corresponding with the up and down holes on the pedal arm. I'm going to swap this out for a fat one. And we are going to mount this in the lower position and as far to the left as we possibly can. So we're going to go to the lowest hole down here. You can see the lower hole. We're going to go to the lower hole down here. And that is where we're going to put that pedal face. And now you can see that we have now created two and seven eighths of an inch between our gas and brake, that's gonna be a lot more comfortable for heel toe action. All right, now the clutch, you can see it's very close to the brake at this point, and it's at a completely different angle. In fact, let's look at that angle difference real quick. So now you can see the difference in angle between this one laid back and this one a lot more vertical. Laid back, vertical. You can also see the distance in the face, where the face sits. I can now press on this brake that much before it even touches the gas pedal, or would, before it's even flush with the gas pedal, I should say. All right, so let's real quickly do this one. We don't even have to tighten it up, but we will. Try not to slip out with my tool. I don't wanna scratch the faces. Okay, same thing. We're gonna go all the way to the right and into the lower set of holes and then the lower set of holes down here. And now we have the same distance that we had at the beginning between the gas and brake, I mean, sorry, the clutch and brake, and an increased distance between the brake and the gas pedal. We've changed the angles so that our gas, our, our brake and our clutch are a little bit more vertical and a little bit closer to the driver. With our gas pedal being a little higher, and a little bit more reclined. And you can see these two are now flush and the same height as well. So that, that kind of covers the pedal face adjustments that we have available for this pedal set. This is exactly how I set them up for my testing. This is exactly how I'd want them for my style of driving essentially. So this, this works out really good for me right here on my rig. Now, the other thing that's even more fun than that, I love being able to get things dialed in the way I want them to be. Now we're talking about brake tension. Now the gas and the clutch, there's nothing we can do to change the tension, but the brake is very tunable. So you can see right now it came with the two silver or black washers, uh, spring sets with a silver one in between. And this is a pretty lightly sprung, whoops, that was because I just put that back in. It was just reseating. This is a pretty lightly sprung, I mean, not super light. The white spring is actually even lighter than those. So 
it's pretty easy to make a change on this. Uh, so you don't have to be shy about trying different combinations. Now, I'm coming from a very strong brake pedal, so I had a pretty good idea that I was going to want to go right to the stiffest springs, these red ones that you can use. Um, and then the, they give you these washers to remove the silver springs. So if you, it's hard to see on this because they're all soft springs, but when we go to the red, you'll see what I'm talking about. So all you have to do is just hold the pedal up in place, pull down on that assembly, and then the parts will come out. We start with the top collar, then we have our first spring, then we have our, our sandwich with the little silver spring and the two little plastic uh, aligning rings, and then a black spring. So when we're looking at the springs, by the way, just trying to give you an idea on tension, you can see they all have different spring rates. They're all different squishinesses, and this white one being the softest of all. So now I could just replace the white for one of these if I wanted a softer. If I wanted the softest, it looks like I would go to this combination right here, white and silver. If I wanted just a little bit stiffer than that. Now, the other thing that happens with springs, springs always work on the lowest resistance. So you'll notice the first spring is always the softest to start compressing. And it's not until that one has enough pressure on it to overcome the tighter springs that they start to compress. Now on the lightweight springs, it's kind of hard to see what I'm talking about, but if we were to actually switch over to these red, now these are the hardest ones, and they actually give you a different set of plastic pieces. So let's go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. Let's put in the bottom red. Let's put in the bottom aligning stop. Whoops, it goes this way. Let's put in our silver spring. This is where these washers would come out. It eliminate, eliminates that silver spring. We'll come back to that. Put in our top aligning ring and then our red top. Now, when we put that top collar in, all we have to do is push down on this whole stack and slide it under that arm and it snaps right into place. Give it a few presses, make sure everything's lined up nice. And there we go. Now, what I'm talking about on the softest spring compressing first, watch these silver springs and how they compress before the red spring. That right there is actually giving you about this much distance of soft travel. Doesn't take that much pressure to overcome that silver spring. Now, we can remove that and make this even stiffer or direct by putting these washers in this area to eliminate that silver spring, essentially. Now, I do a lot of brush breaking, so I like being able to give some light breaking and know that it's going to take a certain amount of pressure to overcome anything more than 10 or 15 percent in the game. That's when I'm going to have to start pressing a little bit harder to compress those red springs and get that kind of load down to the load cell. Now, other adjustments. So again, we can use any combination of any of these springs together. We can use those. If you really wanted like a really a, a big two-phase type of a feeling, you could get rid of that. You could put another white in here and you could have a completely different two-step braking sensation. So it's going to press the, the silver and the white long before the red. And you can see a much more progressive, longer soft throw than we had before, before it gets to that red. The other option, of course, going back to the full stiff variation, if we were to take this stop out and put this stack of washers, five washers that came with it, right there, now when this goes in, there's nowhere for this spring to compress. It's bottomed out on that spring. So now when I do it, we're not going to have that easy squishy zone. It's going to be a little harder to put this in, of course. There we go. You can see just how it's limited our travel. It's made the brake enormously stiff. I mean, probably to the point where we could remove that from our cons list. Now, again, I like having that slightly squishy section. So for me, that's just a little too much in terms of how... <sighs> It's really hard to undo it with that much pressure in it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Whew. 
that was grueling. And you could do that lockout with the soft springs too, by the way, just to remove the super springy silver spring area. Go back to that, and that's how I like this brake right there. Boom. Little brush brake and then heavy. <laughs> So that pretty much takes us through all the adjustments that you can do to dial in the hardware side of this pedal set, the TLCM Thrustmaster pedals. Um, there is some software that you can do to kind of change things even further. We're going to get to that in just a moment. <coughs> now, when it comes to installing these into your rig, it came with that template. That template shows you the five mounting holes that are on the bottom of the pedal base. You've got one here, here, a center hole, and then down here. Those will bolt down just like that standard hardware with using that template. You can use that template to drill your rig if you don't have holes, or in my case, I'm using an R seat S1 chassis, and I was able to line up with the two top holes and the middle hole, which is more than enough. As heavy as these are, they're going nowhere with three hard mounting uh, bolts holding them into a metal rig. Uh, or you could have drilled. The other option is if you have a rig and it only has like the old Thrustmaster style uh, hole, holes, well this kit, which you can get, this is the cockpit adapter. This actually bolts down to the bottom. You would bolt it into these two holes like this and it converts it to a standard Thrustmaster two bolt but it centers it nicely and holds it in four spots into those two bolts. So that's another option if you don't want to drill and you have a rig that works with old Thrustmaster drilling pattern. Uh, other than that, it's pretty easy. I mean, you bolt it to the rig and as long as they're secure, you should be good to go for plenty of racing. Now, before you can actually get it out on track, you still do have to do a little bit of software work to it. Uh, there is a calibration tool. This calibration tool is very cool. First of all, you're going to use it on the PC. It works at 16-bit resolution. If you plug in the DIMM USB cable, plug it in the back here, and then directly into the computer, that's going to work at 16-bit resolution, and it only works on the PC that direction. And then it works with just about, not just about, it works as a standalone pedal set. Therefore, you could use it with any steering wheel that you have on your rig or that you should acquire. So that is also part of the installation. The other is if you're going to use a Thrustmaster wheelbase, like I use a TSXW, gives me Xbox 360, compa Xbox One compatibility. I uh, use the RJ45 cable, one in the back, one in the back of the wheelbase. Now that can slightly affect another thing. I downloaded the full Thrustmaster driver kit anyway, and I installed it onto my computer. I don't think you actually have to do that if you're using the standalone pedals. I think you could literally just plug them in. I would then download the calibration tool as well. So with the calibration tool, when you fire it up, you'll see that you can read or see the movement of all three pedals up on the screen. You're going to see it in raw data. You're also going to see it in the what the game would perceive in terms of the registered data. And you can actually adjust a dead zone. You can adjust a dead zone at both the top and the bottom independently, which is a great feature to have. Some games are really finicky. You have a 16-bit pedal set, 65,000 points of resolution. The, the hint of movement, the, a fan blowing might be enough to cause a little flicker. Being able to put in just a little tiny dead zone for those oversensitive moments is very nice. I actually have a little trick myself. To be honest with you, in a perfect scenario, when I fired up the calibration tool, what I did, I put a teeny tiny bit of dead zone, like 1% on each pedal. That way, if I put my foot on it, it doesn't register until I actually press. The other thing is, I find myself holding myself at full throttle just for fear that it might come off. You know, I'm missing this much of my movement, sure but I put a 1% dead zone at the top as well. That way I know I don't have to slam the brake pedal against the wall. I know it's always gonna register full percentage. Same thing on the brake, same thing on the clutch. So that's my little trick on their calibration tool, but having those features av available is critical. So you open up the calibration tool, you dial in a little dead zone on the bottom for the gas, brake, and clutch. You dial in a little dead zone on the top for the gas, brake, and clutch. And then at the bottom, you have another bar that will let, uh, let you adjust the brake power or strength. And with that dial, you can actually adjust 
the linearity of how quickly it achieves full pressure. Since you're using a load cell, you might want to change at what point. So what I would recommend is keep pressing on that brake pedal and making adjustments to that overall strength until you get it to the point where you're like, that is how hard I want to press to achieve full throttle and the speed at which it's going to achieve it. As soon as you've done all that, you can hit the apply button. That will then prompt you to unplug the pedals and then plug them back in. And when you do, you'll be able to see all your pedals and your new settings, and then you can close the calibration tool. Now, for those who are gonna plug it in with the RJ45 into the wheel base itself, you are then gonna wanna, obviously I already downloaded and installed the, the Thrustmaster drivers. You're gonna wanna open up in your start menu, go to Thrustmaster, and then you're gonna go to wanna go to firmware update. When you open that, It'll open up a new window. You'll see it recognize your hardware and you go ahead and tell it to do a firmware update. It will go through all the steps on its own. And when it's complete, you should be up and running and ready to race. It's just time to get out there, calibrate it in your game, and then see how they last or see how they do on track. So I hope that helps you get these dialed in for you. Just remember, get those faces where you want them to be so that you're comfortable. Get that brake tension spring adjustment so that it's the kind of tension, the kind of pressure that you want to feel, your perception of how hard a brake pedal should be for the kind of driving that you're doing. And then lastly, go into that calibration tool and make sure that you get a little dead zone for your safety or take it away. They're very accurate pedals. You don't have to have any dead zone whatsoever. And then finally, get that brake curve adjusted. Last tip I'll give you is if you go to iRacing and you've been on standard pedals, you're gonna wanna go to that brake curve factor in the top of the calibration of the settings page and turn that down to zero. The default is 1.8, that is great for a potentiometer, but if you're on a load cell or hydraulic, you're gonna want that curve factor at zero. Calibrate those pedals and see what they'll do out on track. I hope this helps you out. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed taking the time to do this and separating it from the regular video as well. And I hope you like the freestyle action of not having any script whatsoever, just doing it based on how I would approach it myself. That is the new look of the Sim Pit for 2020. Thank you, Thrustmaster, for getting me these pedals. Again, $200 for the Thrustmaster TLCM load, pedal, load cell pedal set add-on or upgrade, depending on where you're coming from. Thank you very much, Thrustmaster. It's my pleasure to review these and show off their features, being that it's been so long overdue to get a load cell pedal out of you guys. That's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to check out our other videos. We did two driving videos showing our first drive using these pedals. We did an unboxing video and of course the full review as well. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.